Hello everyone, welcome back, it's time for another Kaguya Summer Reaction. This time we are up to Season 2, Episode 11, continuing the Sports Festival arc. So, we learned that uh, Shirogane's father is the type who likes to embarrass his kids, apparently. <laughs> On the other hand, at least he does take much more sort of interest in his kids, I think, um, at least compared to Shinomiya's father. So, um, he decided, I think, after hearing his son was having some certain romantic issues. So, he went down to the school festival, apparently because he had nothing better to do, but actually because he wanted to go have a sticky beak and try to find out which girl his son was interested in, or I guess which girl was causing his son to have such, um such issues at the at the moment and he proved to be very astute in identifying Shinomiya very quickly tying her name to the phone call that he remembered and uh yeah managed to get some details of her feelings about Muki by pretending that he was just a random stranger insulting um, Miyuki, basically. So that was interesting. That was fun. Speaking of fun, we also had Chika coaching Miyuki again, except this one went a little differently. I really like how the comedy sort of not upgraded, but it went different. It was a it was an updated version of the same running joke of Chika coaching Miyuki. Except in this time, she gave up on him at first, but only as an excuse that we could get Shinomiya coming in to help, and then them having a bit of a tug of war with each other to properly help Miyuki learn the the Soran dance. It ended up being indirectly Chika's point of view that sort of helped him understand the Soran dance indirectly, and that she was the one who was arguing that it's more about understanding the passion and the feeling and all that sort of thing. And I think that's actually how he how he learned to do it. Except it was only because Chika and um Chika and Kaguya were fighting over him that he actually managed to get that feeling of what it feels like to be a net. And managed to uh then get into the right mind state for how to perform the dance. Yeah, so also during this section we had the short story about the magistrate who had told two women who were trying arguing over ownership or like custody of a child to tug of war with the child. And then he ended up granting sort of custody to the woman who let go first when he was hurt. But anyway, that was used just to parallel Chika and Shinomiya fighting over teaching a shiragane. But it was funny, the art was pointed out to me in a comment by Anita. Hopefully I didn't mangle the username, sorry. Distraught-looking stalker girl was in this story as one of the mothers. She's fighting with Kashiwagi over the baby who looks like Kashiwagi's boyfriend. And I hadn't noticed that. It's hilarious that I was actually wondering about the stalker girl at the start of the episode, just out of nowhere. I just thought, oh, I haven't seen that side character for a while. And then she actually shows up indirectly, and I missed it. So anyway, that was funny. Um, thanks for the comment, because I didn't see it myself, and I wouldn't have realized it at all, possibly even on a rewatch, um, if that, that hadn't point, been pointed out. So that was good. That was like a good sort of mostly separate. I mean, it's related to the sports festival, but largely it was just a separate joke. Um, not really related to any ongoing arc there. But speaking of ongoing arcs, how am I doing at uh, transferring from one thing to the next? The other one that we've had going for a bit is the Ishigami one, which I think is has been set up a bit in a previous episode and looks like it's actually continuing this episode. So that's the story of him trying to trying to change change himself or at least try to try to engage with other things again 
by joining the cheer squad, despite having this sort of past where now we understand why some people don't like him, because apparently the rumors are, at least, that he stalked a girl and assaulted her boyfriend. But he hasn't given his own side of the story, so I'm not inclined to believe that. But I think I definitely want to see more of what happens with that. It's a, it's an interesting arc that's sort of building up there. But for now, we've got more sports festival. It seems like we've got quite, quite a bit to go. We could probably do the next couple of episodes, maybe. There was a short part where you got to see the um, the schedule, and it seems like we were on, we were only up to about ten forty five a.m. thereabouts if I remember correctly. In any case, it was still before noon. We'd done things like the the Soran dance, the uh, the 100 meters run, and the three-legged race. And I think the three-legged race was the one that was at 10.45 a.m., and there was like a whole bunch of stuff after that. So I don't know whether we'll get to see much of it, of the, you know, actual particular events or whether it's just going to be, you know, the setting for whatever actual story happens, but that's what we're going to dive into right now. Okay, so for Season 2, Episode 11, looks like we've got three parts to it. Yu Ishigami Closes His Eyes, Part 3. Miyuki Shiragane and Yu Ishigami. And Kyoko Otomo Doesn't Realize. It's interesting, we've had Yu Ishigami Closes His Eyes Part 2 not that long ago. Potentially all of these may be Yu Ishigami related. I don't know who Kyoko Otomo is though. So just a reminder that these are full-length timer-based reactions. So if you have your own copy, you'll be able to watch along with me. I'll do a countdown, there'll be a timer just above my video here. <laughs> And um, you can use that to try to sync up. Uh, note that my copy of the video doesn't have any splash screens or um, stuff like that. It just goes straight into the episode. And this one looks like it doesn't start with the opening either. We get an interesting shot. I bet this is Yu Ishigami because I remember that they were... Or one of the things they were doing was boys were wearing the girl outfits and girls were wearing the boy outfits. So I think this is possibly Yu Ishigami um, wearing Shinomiya's uniform. All right, I will be starting in three, two, one, now. You look lovely, you Ishigami. <laughs> you crazy high. Nice one. Why do I feel something's gonna... Hmm. Hmm. 
This must be that girl. Oops. The leader sounds really upbeat and sort of carefree. These guys have been so good for him. It's a pity that he's still got all this other stuff sort of hanging over him, though. Man, that sucks. Even drains out all of the positive reinforcement that he's been getting. What happened then? Ko Ogino. So wasn't jealous. An excessive sense of justice. Don't to do anything about it, just stop cheating on her.
Uh, slime ball. What a scumbag. Well, no wonder. Wow. I mean, sure, beating him up probably wasn't right either, but. Dude is definitely a scumbag. Language of flowers, a little strength.
That sucks. Big man, what an asshole. Poor dude's got so much going on. Uh oh. Yeah, slugging him probably wasn't the best thing. Look at Shirogane bringing light to him. <laughs> Go to hell, dumbass.
stupid girl. Well, that's on you. No matter what you think, no matter how you threaten me. See, he has people cheering for him. Ah. Oh. Not quite. That was a good effort, though. <laughs> yeah, he did receive the bu button later. Ignore all of the other people. You know all of the people that matter. <laughs> the genuine normies can be genuinely nice. I like I like how it showed all of the faces now. <laughs> Even if it's the truth. <laughs> Oh dear. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You chose to go through all that for no benefit. Oh, wow. Oh, there's music. <clears throat> Oh, that was sweet. A 
So yeah, we found out that he, um, the girl, well, the boyfriend that he attacked, well, he actually did <laughs> assault him. The guy was a scumbag. Um, so I think it's reasonable that you got suspended for it. Um, he probably shouldn't have hit him, but I also think it's right that, um, that Ishigami did not apologize either. He said he felt remorse for everything else, but I, uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's right that he refused to apologize. It sort of worked, everything just kind of worked its, worked itself out. <clears throat> It's extremely true to life that you can have so many positive things going on, but if you've got something, one particular deep negative thing, it's very difficult to avoid and tune those out. And I can see how this thing that's been haunting Ishigami for such a long time can so easily overwhelm the various positive influences he's had recently, um, you know, through the student council, through joining the the cheer club and all that sort of thing, or the cheer squad, the cheer team, whatever. I went down. He even when they're all trying to be supportive, he can almost not hear it just because of the the noise, the static coming from just the negative things that are being said about him or even just like the imagined negative things he's hearing but no it's good there are people who are willing to either look past or I mean after all there was sort of an investigation done by the student council so there are people who do believe in him and don't um... yeah they obviously don't believe the old the old rumors. Some, there are some people who are going to know the old rumors, and that's going to stick around. But there are people who also believe in the better part of Ishigami, or basically had no opinion of him. I imagine. And it was really nice to see, yeah, the positive effect that this has had on him. And um, I'd been thinking so often about how they kept drawing people without faces. And I was wondering, is it just because they're not important? Like, what does, what does that mean to him? It was interesting to have... Because we already knew that two... That some of the other people in the cheer team had... You know, they had, like, distinct voices. It's not like they were just randomly kind of there. So it was interesting for them to still be faceless, even though they'd been voiced to, like, a reasonable extent already. But yeah, it was used to really good effect <clears throat> at this <clears throat> at this point in the episode where he... where he managed to sort of throw all of the other... the garbage away and see that he's got people who are... Who are there, who are, you know, friendly, who support him and all that. And, uh... And then it reintroduced the faces for these people, and, uh... That was a really great way of doing it. I, I really love that. And I don't know why I... <laughs> I still feel sort of very emotional about it all. Um... It's making it a bit difficult to speak. But no, that was awesome, and we still get another episode. I think that was the end of the school... Uh, sorry, I think that was the end of the sports festival, though. Which means that I guess we get... We might just have some tail-end school festival, uh, sport festival stuff in the final episode, or we might just use it as a chance to launch into some new sort of things to prepare us for next season, which I hope that we get. Oh, that was good. I don't have anything else to say. It was it was just good stuff. We didn't even get an opening, which was a bit unusual. 
Well, not unusual. They had a lot of stuff to cover, so they just skipped it. But yeah, did not expect that. I'm so glad that this show can focus this sort of time on its um on its other characters as well. I hope we get to see more of that as time passes. Anyway, that's it. If I've got nothing to say, there's no point in dragging this out. So I'm going to finish this video here. That's it for Season 2, Episode 11. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, so good. We've only got one episode left, which makes me very sad. But still, this has been a great season. I've been I've been extremely pleased with it. I really hope we get more. Yeah, so tell me what you thought in the comments down below. And otherwise, take it easy, and I'll see you next time.